to Jeremiah chapter 8. So last week, the end of chapter 7, God's provided Jeremiah with a sermon to preach to the people, and the end of chapter 7 ends uh, in a pretty uh, harsh and and low, uh, in a low spot in terms of judgment uh, that's coming towards the people, and now, in chapter 8, we're going to be starting in verse 4. Um, there's still continued sin that the Lord is uh, going to confront in the people. And, and the root cause of the sin that God is confronting is, is the rejection of the Word of God. Um, so let's, let's read chapter 8, verse 4. I'll, I'll, I'm going to read until verse 17. And while I read, watch for the sins of the people that, that are being confronted, because I'm going to ask you what, what you see, and then we're going we're to walk through it. So chapter 8, verse 4. You shall say to them, thus is the Lord, when men fall, do they not rise again? If one turns away, does he not return? Why then has this people turned away in perpetual backsliding? They hold fast to deceit. They refuse to return. I've paid attention and listened, but they have not spoken rightly. No man relents of his evil, saying, What have I done? Everyone turns to his own course, like a horse plunging headlong into battle. Even the stork in the heavens knows her times, and the turtle dove, swallow, and crane keep the time of their coming. But my people know not the rules of the Lord. How can you say... We are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us. But behold, the lying pen of the scribes has made it into a lie. The wise men shall be put to shame. They shall be dismayed and taken. Behold, they have rejected the word of the Lord. So what wisdom is in them? Therefore, I will give their wives to others and their fields to conquerors, because from the least to the greatest, everyone is greedy for unjust gain. From prophet to priest... Everyone deals falsely. They have healed the wound of my people lightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they committed abomination? No, they were not at all ashamed. They did not know how to blush. Therefore, they shall fall among the fallen. When I punish them, they shall be overthrown, says the Lord. When I would gather them, declares the Lord, there are no grapes on the vine, no figs on the fig tree, Even the leaves are are withered, and what I gave them has passed away from them. Why do we sit still? Gather together, let us go into the fortified cities and perish there, for the Lord our God has doomed us to perish and has given us poisoned water to to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. We looked for peace, but no good came. For a time of healing, but behold, terror. The snorting of their horses is heard from Dan at the sound of the neighing of of their stallions. The whole land quakes. They come and devour the land and all that fills it, the city and those who dwell in it. For behold, I am sending among you serpents, adders, that cannot be charmed, and they shall bite you, declares the Lord. All right, so what, uh, what sins did you see the Lord talking about? Uh, with the people as we read through that. Deceit, yes. Uh, so there's, there's a believing of lies and there's a, even the telling of lies. Uh, deceit. What else did you see? Yeah, they, they, they don't know... The law of the Lord. They don't. Uh, they don't have his. They don't know his word. They don't repent. There, there's no repentance. Yeah, um, that that's the that's the first thing that I think we should look at. Verse four. So this lack of repentance. You shall say to them, "Thus says the Lord: When men fall, do they not rise again? If one." turns away, does he not return? So, 
So what, what is God saying there? Um, have any of you ever fallen down in your life? <laughs> like, like actually, like literally, like fallen down on the floor? <laughs> it seems that everyone's gotten up. Like you're, you're here, right? Um, if, if someone falls down and they don't get up, that means there's a serious problem, right? There is something seriously wrong if, you, if I were to walk down the steps and fall down and just not get up. There's a serious problem. The same thing with leaving home. When you leave your home, don't you usually go back to it at some point? <laughs> if you don't, again, there's probably... Something seriously wrong happened where you're not returning home. Um, this, is, uh, this is where the people are at. They, they, they've fallen down and, and they haven't gotten up. They, they've, in a sense, left their home and they haven't returned. So, something is seriously wrong um, with the people in their condition, and, and it's that they're not, they're not repentant. Um, in, in some ways... As I, as I read this, I, it made me think of the, the prodigal son, the, the story of the, the parable of the prodigal son, uh, where the son decides he wants his inheritance early. Uh, so he, he takes his inheritance from his dad, and he leaves, he squanders it, he makes a bunch of friends with his wealth, um, and lives a, a lavish lifestyle. And, and then all of a sudden, when, when all of that is spent... He has, he didn't actually make real friends. They just liked his money. Uh, he's alone. Uh, he's uh, feeding pigs and desiring to eat the food that he's feeding to the pigs. Uh, he's, he's fallen down. He's, he's gone away uh, from home. Uh, and so this is the place where the people of Israel are. But, but what's different about the prodigal son? What happens, what happens next? The prodigal son. He returns. He repents. Uh, and, and what's the response from the father? He lovingly, forgivingly brings him back into the family. Um, and this is the defining moment of uh, defining characteristic of a Christian, a return to the Lord, a return to the Father who forgives. It's repentance. So if people would repent and return to the Lord, they'd be brought back into his, his loving arms. We just heard this last week in the sermon that God told Jeremiah to preach. Verses 7 Chapter 7, verse 3. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your deeds, and I will let you dwell in this place. That's, that's repentance. Returning to the Lord. And then finding then your dwelling place with the Lord forever. This, this is repentance. But, but instead of getting up after falling down, instead of returning home after, after leaving, uh, chapter 8, verse 5, why then has this people turned away in perpetual backsliding? They hold fast to deceit. They refuse to return. This is, this is the state of, of the heart of the people. They are holding fast not to the word of the Lord. They're holding fast to the lies that they're believing. And they're refusing to, to turn back uh, to God. And so this brings us to the second, the second thing. Uh, they're, they're doing what is right in their own eyes. They're doing what's right in their own eyes. Uh, verse 6. I've paid attention and listened, but they have not spoken rightly. No man relents of his evil, saying, what have I done? Everyone turns to his own course like a horse plunging headlong into battle. Even the stork in the heavens know her times, and the turtle dove, swallow, and crane keep the time of their coming. But my people know not the rules of the Lord. Uh, 
So they, they're uh, um, not relenting of, of their evil. Um, everyone turns to his own course. So they're doing what's right in their own eyes. There's a sense of, I guess we should ask this question. Um, everyone does this, right? The, the decisions that you make, don't you think they're right? Right? <laughs> like you <don't, laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, do, do you purposefully make wrong decisions, like on purpose? Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 so like, yeah, there can be times where it's like, oh man, that was wrong, <laughs> I shouldn't have done that, yeah, um, but, but even that, like, they're not relenting from that, they're not turning um, away, uh, so in doing what is right in their own eyes, it's a, a judgment based upon like my own thinking and my own thoughts, my own desires, rather than looking at the Lord, like that's the difference. Like, what does, what does God say? And I'm going to make my decisions based upon the Word of God, uh, His character, what He commands. That's doing then what is right uh, based upon what the Lord says, as opposed to like, well, this is kind of like what I think or how I feel, and I'm going to make my decision based upon that. Uh, so that, that's a big difference there. Now, so everyone's turning to their own course. Um, and he says, so he, he uses this analogy, like a horse plunging into battle. How, so how, is, how would their decisions, like what, what does that even mean? Like a horse plunging into battle. Uh, what does that make you think of? Yeah, they're, they're doing it with a purpose. They're driving towards it. Uh, when, when, I, when I read that, I, I thought of the Lord of the Rings movies. <laughs> like, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, I, I, I mean, I, I grew up in the city. I, I, you know, don't have that much experience with horses, okay. <laughs> I know other people here have experience with horses, but when I think of like a galloping horse, it's like, the Lord of the Rings battle. <laughs> and uh, they, they're like galloping towards their destination. Uh, horses sometimes even having like blinders on because they're just going straight ahead. It, the people are plunging towards uh, and barreling towards evil in, in their decisions. This is what the people's uh, been, what they've been doing. Um, and, and there, this, is, this is without question and without any conviction. Mm. Yeah. 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 And that actually fits in with, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but, but greed because there's a, well, well I guess we'll, we'll get to that in a, in a moment, but it fits right in with, with that, yeah. 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 Right. It's, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're going in this direction as fast as we can, like without turning. It, when a horse is running really fast, like it's going straight. Yeah. <laughs> and so th there, there's, there's no questions about this. There's no conviction about... Uh, it's a, they're not asking the question, what have I done? That's kind of like what Nate was saying, right? It's like afterwards, after you make a decision, you realize it was wrong. It's like, oh, what have I done? 
Um, th- there's none of that. Um, uh, yeah, th- there's no realizing of the wrongdoing. Um, yeah, th- they're plunging into their sin like a horse galloping into battle. And, and then, so the, the next an- analogy here is interesting, because the Lord brings up birds. <laughs> uh, he talks about birds. So birds are a, a migratory animal, right? They, they, we see this fairly often with the geese flying south or you know, wherever it is that they're going. Um, they, they know the time of year where they need to return home. Uh, and, and they know where to go. And so this is, this is God actually making a, a negative comparison of, of the people and comparing them, them to uh, the birds. And it's a negative insult towards the people. Uh, um, he's saying that the birds know what to do and, and the people don't. Uh, there is one commentator that uh, said that to, to call these people bird-brained would be an insult to the birds. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, the, the birds, are, they, they know where to go, they know where to return. When it's time to return, and, and, and the people, they've, they've been rebellious and are going after what, what they want and what they desire, not thinking about the Lord at all. And the third, the third thing that is there, we mentioned this, they're believing lies and they're telling lies. We see this mentioned in, in verse 6, that the, that the people have not spoken rightly. right? So not speaking rightly, uh, that, that is lying. And out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Um, so if people are, are not speaking rightly, that, that's evidence of what's in their heart. And so what is it that, that, that they're saying? Look at verse 8. How can you say, we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? But behold, the lying pen of the scribes has made it into a lie. The wise men shall be put to shame. They shall be dismayed and taken. Behold, they have rejected the word of the Lord. So, that, so what wisdom is in them? If someone tells you about how wise they are, what, what, what do you think? They're probably not. <laughs> they're, yeah. They're probably not. Uh, there's a, there'd be a great deal of pride. Uh, hmm, yeah, can I trust you? You, you think you're, you're a wise guy, huh? Uh, <laughs> Romans one twenty two, claiming to be wise, they became fools. Uh, we'll have some foolishness in us, don't we? Uh, these these people, they believe that they're wise, and the re- part of the reason why that they believe they're wise is because they have the law of the Lord. So they have the law of the Lord, so they think they're okay, but simply having the law of the Lord is not wisdom. Uh, This is similar to, remember how we talked about how the people were trusting in the fact that the temple was residing in Jerusalem? Like, we have the temple, so we're safe. This is also kind of similar to that. Well, we have, we just, we have the law, so we're safe. We're from, like, we're good with, with the Lord. The temple exists. God's word exists. So that means we're all good, right? Um, this would kind of be like someone saying, like, well, I mean, I have a Bible. I've even read it once. Like, I have I have the Bible, so like I'm I'm good, but simply having the Bible with you, uh, and even and even knowing some of the Bible, that, that's not what provides salvation. Uh, salvation is 
comes by grace through faith, uh, r- repenting and, and turning to Christ. Uh, and, and he provides us with a new heart and new desires. So yes, the people, they, they possess the temple. And yes, uh, they have the word of God, uh, but they've, they've twisted the scriptures to, to meet their own desires. Uh, they've trusted in the fact that they simply have the temple and they simply have the word of God for that to be their protection. Uh, so coming, to, coming to church, having a, a, your own church building, that's not salvation. Having, having your own Bible, that is not salvation. Uh, even, even knowing some, some verses isn't salvation. Uh, look at verse 9. The wise men shall be put to shame. They shall be dismayed and taken. Behold, they have rejected the word of the Lord. So what wisdom is in them? How does verse 9 here uh, describe wisdom? Yeah, so... So it says, they've rejected the word of the Lord. So, how, so what wisdom would be in them? The wisdom that, from someone who, who rejects the word of the Lord, the wisdom that would be in them would be a, a worldly wisdom, uh, not wisdom that would come from, from God. Um, they, they've rejected, rejected the word, and in, in doing, they've also rejected true wisdom. There could, uh, the opposite of this being, so I guess we'll ask this question. What, what's the difference between knowing God's word and, and accepting God's word? Okay, so there's obedience involved in that, for sure. Yeah. Um, repentance. So there's a, a belief that it's true with acceptance. When you accept something, you're believing that this is right. Uh, you can know something and disagree with it, right? Like, there's lots of, there's things in life that I know about that I disagree with. <laughs> uh, but the, the acceptance, so they've rejected uh, the word of God. So there's, the wisdom that's in them is a wisdom of the world, but an accepting of, of the word of God would be to believe in it, to, to trust in it, uh, to um, not, not only know the word of God, but um, to, to talk about obedience, that there's a, a, a level of, like, this is, this is changing my life because it's true, uh, belief in faith. And so accepting God's, God's word is more than simply knowing it, uh, taking it to heart. Uh, James talks about how even uh, the demons believe and, and shudder. Um, it's to believe and in, in, in follow uh, the word of God in, in, in faith. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. And there's so along with delighting in in, in the law, uh, like there's there's other passages that talk about like the law of the Lord is like honey on my lips. It, that this is like this is actually good, uh, good for us. This is not uh, like I don't know like. God being like a strict school teacher, providing like all of these rules, and like you you better obey. Like this is 
the word of God is God's love for us, and he, he created all things and knows how life works, and this is for our good and our flourishing and also his glory. And th- that's where, like, that delight comes from, is, realize, like, believing that. Like, this is, like God's not, like, out, out to get us. <laughs> uh, like, this, he's for our good, uh, as, as he is for himself. Um, yeah, so, okay, so a fourth thing is the people being greedy. Look at verse 10. Therefore I will give their wives to others and their fields to conquerors, because from the least to the greatest, everyone is greedy for unjust gain. From prophet to priest, everyone deals falsely. How would you define greed? Greed. A constant dissatisfaction, okay? Uh, and like a desiring for more, right? Yeah. Uh, if, if you remember, so, so what Sean mentioned a few minutes ago in terms of the, the plunging headlong into battle uh, like a horse, like the, that's how the people going after their sin and that being like a, an overtaking and even violent against uh, somebody else. Uh, so it says everyone is greedy for unjust gain. That, that's an important uh, description there in, in speaking about uh, greed. Is, I guess I ask it this way, is gain, is gaining evil? No. It's not. Uh, it, we can be faithful and and gain and, and be prosperous. That, that, but the, what we're seeing here is there, there's an unjust gain that, that is happening here, um, even from the re- religious leaders. So it's not wrong to to build something and have a lot of gain uh, from that. Uh, there's Wisdom and being able to, to multiply what the Lord has, has given you. We see that with the, with the parable of the talents, right? Where the, the master gives uh, the guys some different talents and they go off and uh, they, some of them produce more. Um, another guy doesn't. And it's not, it wasn't evil for them to produce more from what they were given. Uh, that's, that's not um, what we're talking about. We're, we're talking about an unjust uh, gain. So what we see from greed is that greed is willing to act unjustly in order to try to be satisfied. Right? So greed is willing to act unjustly to try to be satisfied in whatever it is that, that the desire is there for. So, so what are some ways that we could see this type of greed uh, in real life. Um, what do you think? Yeah. So uh, someone could do something that is evil and wrong, but the, 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 but the desire is, I know that this group of people over here might praise me, provide me with uh, applause or, or whatever. Um, and so it would be acting unjustly in order to gain something, that being like the approval of man. So there can be a greed for the approval of man. Yeah, absolutely. What else? Say that again. Okay. Yeah. So it'd be like, uh, there, there would be some deception in that. Um, of not keeping to your own word. Uh, that there might be something that you could gain by not keeping to your word. 
Um, and that'd be to act unjustly to whoever he had a deal with or, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, we can be greedy for a lot of different things. It's not, it's not just necessarily uh, monetary, although that tends to be, when I think of greed, that tends to be what I think of is, is money. And, and that definitely can, there can be greed with money, but it is broader uh, than that. Uh, greed, greed does go beyond that. And, and so God says that everybody is greedy from the least to the greatest. So do you, do you remember when God had told Jeremiah, like, go into the city and try to find someone who's righteous? Right, we had talked about that before. Go into the city, try to find someone who's righteous, and Jeremiah looks, he looks at the poor, he looks at the great, he looks at the young, he looks at the old. There isn't anybody who's, who's righteous. And so this calls back to that same idea that every person, uh, rich or poor, um, young or old, everyone is, is greedy for unjust gain, even, even the prophets and the priests. They're supposed to be the people who are speaking the word of God, doing sacrifices, leading the people in a spiritual way. It's, it's, this greed has infected everybody. Uh, Proverbs twenty eight twenty five says, A greedy man stirs up strife, but the one who trusts in the Lord will be enriched. Ecclesiastes 5.10 says, He who loves money will not be satisfied with money, nor he who loves wealth with his income. This also is vanity. It's that dissatisfaction, right? That I got to have more. Hebrews 13.5, Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. And I love that... uh, these, the, the writer of Hebrews put these things together because how often does money leave you and forsake you? Every day. <laughs> we're, we're spending money every day. It's constantly leaving you. That's all money does is leave you. <laughs> uh, but the Lord never leaves you or forsakes you. Uh, one of my favorite musicians wrote a lyric And this is what he said, and I thought it was interesting in terms of thinking about greed. He says, no matter how much stuff, enough is never enough, like giving water to a a man who's drowned. Like, oh man, uh, that's that's such a great picture of of what greed does to us. Uh, There's a man drowning, you, you don't like give him another cup of water. Like, that's what's killing him is is water. Uh, that's not what he needs, but that's, that's what we do in our, in our greed, is we're drowning and, and desiring more of the same thing that, that, that is actually destroying us. Um, it's, it's a good picture of verse 11, uh, and, we, and we've seen this before. So verse 11 says, they have healed the wound of my people lightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Right, so the, the prophets and priests, they've been given, uh, they have not been giving the people what they need to, to be healed. Uh, they need the truth of the word of God, but they've been, uh, they've been lying, they've been saying that everything is okay, they've been saying everything, that, that there's peace with the Lord, and that is a spiritual malpractice, uh, just like looking at a person who's drowning and giving them a cold, refreshing cup of water. That, that's not what the person needs. They don't need more water. Um, the, the people don't need to be re- reassured of, about peace because they're drowning in the peace that they have with their own sin. It's killing them. They, they need the truth. They need, they need repentance. Um, but the people, they, they remain adamant in their sin Verse 12, were they ashamed when they committed abomination? No, they were not at all ashamed. They did not know how to blush. Therefore, they shall fall among the fallen when I punish them. They shall be overthrown, says the Lord, when I would gather them, declares the Lord. There are no grapes on the vine, no figs on the fig tree. Even the leaves are withered. And 
What I gave them has, has passed away from them. So they're, so they're sinning without shame. Um, and so God is going to bring about justice. He's going to, the, the Babylonians are going to come and overtake them. God found no, no fruit. Um, and and even, even the leaves were, were drying up. Uh, he says, what I gave them has passed away from them. So verses 14 and 15 is actually a, a response from, from the people. Why do we sit still? Gather together. Let us go into the fortified cities and perish there. For the Lord our God has doomed us to perish and has given us poisoned water to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. We looked for peace, but no good came. For a time of healing, but behold, terror. So... Uh, did God doom did God doom the people to perish? He did offer them chances to repent, didn't he? He did. Uh, we, we've, we've seen this. Um, so yes, he is providing the judgment that they deserve. But he, he has been slow to anger. He has been steadfast in his love. He's provided every opportunity for the people to, to repent. Uh, and they haven't. And so, in, in, in a sense, the people are giving lip service to God, saying that, yeah, they've, they've sinned, but they're also, they're also blaming God and saying that God has doomed them to perish. Uh, but they've, the people have brought this doom on themselves. They are the ones responsible for their actions and, and, and their sin. They are the ones responsible for the fact that they have not turned and mended their ways and re- repented. They, they, have, they have brought their, the, their doom on themselves. Uh, and they say that they looked for peace, but, they, but the peace they looked for wasn't in the Lord, uh, in, the, in their sin, um, but in their sin, as the prophets and priests proclaimed to them, uh, that's where they were trying to find their peace, was the prophets and priests saying, oh, there's peace, but that wasn't true. It was a lie. And, and so the Lord speaks again in, in verses 16 and 17. The snorting of their uh, horse, horses heard from Dan at the sound of the neighing of their stallions, the whole land quakes. They come and devour the land and all that fills it. For behold, I am sending among you serpents, adders that cannot be charmed, and they shall bite you, declares the Lord. Um, this is the way that the Lord des- decides to describe the judgment that's coming upon the people. And this brings up memories from uh, Numbers. Do you remember? It's Numbers uh, 21, where there's these poisonous serpents that come and are biting the people, and, and God tells Moses to make a, a bronze snake and put it on a pole, and if anyone's bitten and then looks at the pole, that they, they would be healing. Um, and that, that healing came from the Lord, not actually from the, the bronze, bronze serpent. But this brings, uh, there's a reminder of, of that. Uh, and so then Jeremiah, he, he's grieving over the people. Uh, look at verse 18. Um, I'm actually going to read into verse, into chapter 9 here. Let, let's, let's read a little bit. Uh, so chapter 8, verse 18. My joy is gone. Grief is upon me. My heart is sick within me. Behold, the cry of the daughter of my people from the length and breadth of the land is, is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their carved images and with their foreign idols? The harvest is, is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the wound of the daughter of my people is my heart wounded. I mourn and dismay has taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has the health of the daughter of my people not been restored? Oh, that my head were waters in my eyes a fountain of tears that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the desert 
a traveler's lodging place, that I might leave my people and go away from them, for they are all adulterers, a company of treacherous men. They bend their tongue like a bow, falsehood and not truth has grown strong in the land, for they proceed from evil to evil, and they do not know me, declares the Lord. Let everyone beware of his neighbor and put no trust in in any brother, for every brother is a deceiver and every neighbor goes about as a slanderer. Everyone deceives his neighbor and no one speaks the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. They weary themselves committing iniquity, heaping oppression upon oppression and, and deceit upon deceit. They refuse to know me, declares the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, behold, I will refine them and test them for what else can I do? Because of my people, their tongue is a deadly arrow. It speaks deceitfully. With his mouth, each speaks peace to his neighbor, but in his heart he plans an ambush for him. Shall I not punish them for these things, declares the Lord, and shall I not avenge myself on a nation such as this? I will take up weeping and wailing for the mountains and lamentation for the pastures of the wilderness because they are laid waste so that no one passes through and the lowing of cattle is not heard. Both the birds of the air and the beasts have fled and are gone. I will make Jerusalem a heap of ruins, a lair of jackals, and I will make the cities of Judah a desolation without inhabitant. We see Jeremiah grieving, uh, weeping uh, for the people, their unfaithfulness to God. He, he's sick about it. Um, and it's, it's proper to be grieved over, over sin. You, even other people's sin, it can, that can affect you. Uh, the rejection of the Lord should, should be a sad, a sad thing. Um, it, is, it is devastating. At the beginning of verse, at the beginning of chapter nine, we see again Jeremiah weeping, and this is one of the verses about that he gets this nickname of being the weeping prophet, and his weeping is coming from his love for the people. He cares about them, and they've they've rejected the Lord, and he understands this. He he speaks of even. Uh, that he would have a lodge in the desert, that he could leave the people behind and, and, and go away because he knows that they've been a, a adulterous and, and treacherous people. And was, we see the deceit that the people have been living in. So look at chapter 9, verse 3. How does, how does falsehood grow strong in a land? It says, falsehood and not truth has grown, grown strong in the land. How does that happen? They keep repeating lies. Yeah, it, it, it speaks. At the end of verse 3, it says, they proceed from evil to evil. Like, that's the continuation. When you, when, when you proceed from something, you are going out from it. So it's like, They've done evil and are going out from it to, to do more. Uh, proceeding from, e- from evil to evil. Um, it, it's a practicing of sin. There's, there's no repentance. Um, we see that in verse 5, no one speaks the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. Uh, they weary themselves committing iniquity. Um, it's the, that continuing of of even even teaching themselves to to speak lies and and in that they're uh, being like the devil uh, they're conforming to his image uh, the deceiver um, it's, it's a, that's a heavy thing isn't it uh, we can look at ourselves and realize that uh, we're, we're guilty of having done this before, too. Uh, we, we've been guilty of, of speaking lies. Um, and something I'd, I'd just like to mention, as, there, there's a lot of, of sin that's being confronted, is that in sin, 
the, the Israelite people and, and to us when we sin, uh, we, we move away from, it's a rejection of the purpose that, that God has created us to live. Uh, and the, the question, what is the chief end of man? Man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. And it's to glorify him. When we sin, we're moving away from, from, that, from that purpose. And when we repent, it's a turning back to what we've been created for, the purpose that the Lord has for us, that, that we do have purpose. We, we have purpose to, to glorify him, to be obedient to him, and to live a, a flourishing life as we obey uh, what, what he has um, commanded. And so it's important that as we, because as, we talk about sin and talk about repentance, that, that this isn't just like a, a, a scolding of like a, a don't do that type of uh, conversation. It's not, this isn't about a, a moral, moralism about not doing certain things. Confrontation is sometimes necessary. Scripture does say that we're called to rebuke sometimes. Um, but we also need to see that, that the call to repent and go and sin no more is, is a call to an abundant life of, of joy in the Lord, uh, of, of purpose in, in the Lord, uh, true satisfaction and, and true joy. And so God confronting the people in their sin, and God confronting us in our sin, this is, this is God's love for us, it's for our good, um, it's for our, for our joy, for our satisfaction in him. Uh, that we would fulfill the purpose that we were created for. Um, it's God's love um, in this. And so even though we recognize ourselves as, as sinners, um, it, we, we must also recognize that uh, it, the Lord in his grace has provided salvation for those who repent and believe, uh, providing flourishing in joy uh, for your life. Um, freedom in him. We're, we're more than conquerors in Christ. Uh, and, and in these passages in Jeremiah, they are hard-hitting. Um, but even in, in them, we can still see the goodness of God. Uh, look back at um, chapter 8, at the end of chapter 8, verse 22. There's a list of questions. Verse 19 says, Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? Asking all all these questions. And verse 22, Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? They've provoked the... they provoked the Lord. Um, The the balm of Gilead, the, the physician that they are in desperate need of is Jesus. He's, the, the, the prophets and priests, they have healed the wound lightly by saying that there is peace when there is no peace. That, that's, a, that's a false healing that the prophets and priests provided to the people. But Jesus provides the true healing because he is the great physician that provides healing for our hearts, healing for our souls, our, our, our life. And so in this, we, we can have hope, even as we see, uh, see our sin, uh, we can see the love of the Lord as he's pursued after us and provided us with the physician that can cure us <laughs> uh, and provide us with health and life. Uh, so let's, let's pray. Uh, God, we're grateful that you are good. We're grateful that you've provided uh, to us Jesus Christ who can provide healing for our souls that we desperately need. I ask that you would be working in our hearts and our minds, that you'd continually be in your love, exposing the sin in our life, that we would, by your grace, repent and and turn to you, and that we would um, live our lives for your honor and glory, and and in so doing, that we would find, even in whatever circumstances and situations we face in life, that we would still find true joy and satisfaction in in you uh, because we have salvation and so whatever it is that we face in life we can have hope 
uh, we, we can have joy um, in knowing that, that you are good and knowing what you've done. So I, I thank you for this morning and uh, pray this in your name. Amen.